our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand, who is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away. And the wolf snatches them and scatters them. The hired hand runs away because a hired hand does not care for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own and my own know me. Just as the Father knows me and I know the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. I must bring them also and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. For this reason, the Father loves me, because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it up again. I have received this command from my Father. The Gospel. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Let us pray. Almighty God, open our ears to hear this word. Open our hearts to receive it. And give us the grace to proclaim your good news. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. I am the good shepherd. I know my own, and my own know me. So here we are, St. Philip's, on this fourth Sunday after Easter. And we find ourselves hearing one of the most famous passages in the Gospel of John. And this very passage from chapter 10 of John's Gospel has had such an impact on the church that we have named this Sunday, the fourth Sunday after Easter, Good Shepherd Sunday. And on this fourth Sunday, every year, we hear lessons that remind us that the one who came in human form and walked this earth, the one who died upon a cross, the one who suffered to redeem us and restore us back to God, the one who was buried the one who women ran to look for only to find his tomb empty. This one is the good shepherd. And though there's something quite comforting and enduring about the image of Jesus as the good shepherd, I don't really think many of us, you know, connect to that shepherd sheep relationship in the same way that John's followers or Jesus' early followers did. Because we're a bit divorced from herding animals. Most of us don't spend a lot of time with sheep. And few of us have ever put shepherd on a resume or a job application. But I think there is a connection that we have to those whom Jesus addressed these words. We all want to belong. We all want to feel as if we are known that someone cares for us, that someone has our best interest at heart, that someone is deserving of our trust. And see, our society tends to locate that struggle of belonging in adolescence, in those trying years, those trying teenage years. But that longing, that ache to be seen, to be heard, to belong, to be known doesn't go away. For even when we have those good lifetime friends, even when we are in families that care about us, there are moments in our lives where we wonder who really knows us? Who really sees us? And I can imagine that the disciples in this post-resurrection world, this post-resurrection reality, when they didn't see Jesus every day, when Jesus wasn't physically next to them at every moment, I can imagine that they were wondering too, who sees us? Who has
has our back, who will lead us. I am the good shepherd. I know my own, and my own know me. See, belonging is an ancient and eternal longing. I mean, you could go all the way back to the book of Genesis with the story of Adam and Eve, and we can find humans listening to voices that promise them belonging. If only you eat this fruit, then you'll be like the gods. Then you'll be like one of them. Then you will belong. Those voices, they don't go away. This world is filled with so much noise, so much babble. Just happened to turn on the TV the other day, and it was almost every commercial that I saw while watching the game was saying to me, you know what? If you just had a little more money, if, if only you had a bigger house or a bigger car, if you just went to this university, then, then you would belong. And then open up the newspaper. And it seems as if the commentary is saying, if only we had more weapons. If only we had just a little bit more power. If only we could just tell every other nation what they could do. If only we could just wield our strength and our might. Then we would truly be safe. And with all those voices grabbing at every moment for our attention, it can be almost impossible to distinguish the inside voices from the outside voices or to really hear anything at all. But as noisy and as loud as these voices may be, I think there are voices that lead our lives. For all of our lives are led by what we hear. They're all at some level led by the voices that we listen to over and over again. So this morning, St. Phillips, what are the voices that are echoing in your mind? What are the voices that are leading your life? What voice is telling you who you are? What's the voice that shapes how you live? Now, it would be easy for me to say that this is a question for other people, but I've been asking myself this question all week. Who has your ear? I am the good shepherd. I know my own, and my own know me. See, when I was when I reflect upon my own life, the people that I know very well, I know their voice. I mean, it's, it's unmistakable. Think about people you know really, really well. You know how they speak. You know what they speak. You know the very tone, the very cadence of their voice. See, even in a crowded room at a crowded family reunion, I can hear my mother's voice. A soft voice, but even amidst the music, if she calls my name, I can hear it. And I know that my mother can hear my voice. Even on a phone thousands of miles away, just by the way I say hello, she knows if something is wrong. And she knows if she needs to give me a word of encouragement or a word of challenge. And that's not something that I learned to yesterday, that's something that I knew as a child. My mother could call my name, and I was like, oh, from the way she said my name, I knew how much trouble I was in. <laughs> <laughs> the Gospel of John is one of the most intimate Gospels that we have. The word abide appears in it about 40 times. And it's written to a community that's wrestling with questions of belonging. And Jesus engages people all throughout this gospel in these long, long conversations so that they would ultimately come to know his voice. And in the gospel of John, that voice, Jesus is telling us something 
about who he is and we hear his voice. Think about all those things that Jesus says in the Gospel of John. I am the bread of life. I am the true vine. I am the door. I am life. I am the resurrection. I am the good shepherd. That's Jesus' voice. And each of those metaphors invite us to live in Christ, to abide, to dwell in Christ, to see Christ as the very source of our lives, the source of our strength, so that our sense of belonging is rooted first and foremost in relationship, in our connection to Christ, a relationship that knows no end, a relationship that will never die for the promise that Jesus gives us in the gospel of John is that for even when we are buried, we are buried in Christ and we are raised again in Christ. And we share in new and eternal life with Christ. I am the good shepherd. I know my own and my own know me. So oftentimes I emphasize listening in sermons probably because I'm preaching to myself and it's the hardest thing for me to do is to stop talking and to listen. But really I think that listening is an underdeveloped spiritual practice. We do a lot of talking. But how often do we practice, I mean really practicing, listening to God's voice so that we can begin to discern what is the voice of God from the many other voices that are clamoring in our ear. For the Christian life, this life that we are living together, it is a listening life. So what does the Good Shepherd's voice sound like in your life? Where do you hear the Good Shepherd's voice in this community? Perhaps it's in scripture, it's in nature. Where do you hear the shepherd call? Because I think that when we hear the shepherd's voice, when this voice becomes familiar to us, our voice changes. And you begin to see that in, in Acts, in that reading that we had, you remember how timid Peter was in the last days of Jesus' life? When they asked him, do you know who this is? And Peter was the first to deny him over and over again. But it's clear that by the time you get to the book of Acts, Peter has heard the shepherd's voice with such conviction that Peter can stand before the powers that be, powers that have imprisoned him and said, you know what? That person that you threw away, that you put on a cross, that's the cornerstone of our lives. And that psalm that we read, you can tell that the psalmist, that's in the 23rd Psalm, has heard the shepherd's voice. Because that psalmist can say, you know what, for myself, I don't care what anyone else says, but for myself, I know that the Lord is my shepherd. And no matter what is going on in my life, I can trust that every need that I have will be supplied. And the psalmist continues and says, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death where the powers of evil and death seek to threaten and stamp out very life, it's clear that the psalmist has heard the voice of the Lord because the voice of the shepherd has told him, you know what, you can walk through the valley of the shadow of death and need not fear. You don't have to listen to the voices of fear. And so this morning, I ask you, what does the shepherd's voice sound like to you? And my hope is that you'll begin to listen to that voice, and that voice will become so familiar that that is the voice that leads your life. Amen.